welcome to this week's Spotlight on America. Now that you Americans have moved your clocks an hour forward, I in Peru am now in Central Daylight Time. So in honor of the Central Time Zone, this week's Spotlight is Newton, Iowa. Once known as the most broken city in America, it's clawing its way back to resurgence. And I as a struggling upstart, advancing solopreneur, I can identify with Newton, Iowa in more ways than one. Now, thanks to Sheldon Cooper, I happen to know that Fig Newtons come from Newton, Massachusetts, not Newton, Iowa, but even still, Newton deserves some homage, not only as being the epicenter of the resurgence of American manufacturing, but also a very nondescript town on the side of an interstate that produced a real happy, positive, pleasant memory during a journey I took across the country about 20 years ago. Newton, they called it the most broken town in America after Maytag closed its factory, probably the biggest manufacturer of washing machines. I believe they merged with Whirlpool. I don't know the whole story. All I know is that I think it happened about 2006. And then in 2007, I read in Business Week that Newton, Iowa didn't even feel the impact of the layoffs from the downsizing, from the closing of the factory because so much ingenuity and so much entrepreneur spirit, but that was very naive optimism. But here we are in the year 2024, the unemployment rates are very low, the people persevered. Having visited Newton, Iowa just one time, I'm not surprised. As you know, this entire series of videos is in anticipation of my trip this coming summer. 30 days on the Amtrak Rail Pass to see the real America. No theme parks, no shopping malls, no hiding out in the suburbs, watching Netflix, ordering pizza. Oh, that sounds good. But that's not what this mission is all about. This mission is about reconnecting with the real America. Last time I took a similar trip was driving across the country from Alaska back to New York. I got out of the Marines in the year 2000, took Amtrak across the country. That's where I got this idea. That was only a three-day trip. Next one will be 30. But after getting my affairs together in New York, I moved up to Alaska. I spent three years there, and I drove out. Headed down from Anchorage to the southeast to Skagway, and I hopped on a ferry for a couple days, got to Seattle, actually Bellingham, Washington, and then across the country. Didn't expect a whole lot from Newton, Iowa. Being a wrestler, I do pay homage to Iowa as the mecca of American wrestling, of course, Oklahoma being the Medina. And at the time, the International Wrestling Hall of Fame was in Newton, Iowa. They've since moved to Cedar Rapids to a bigger facility, closer to the birthplace of Dan Gable. But at the time, it was a very nondescript place that Mike and Bev Chapman operated together. During my road trip, I said, I'm going to stop by the museum in Newton, Iowa. Maybe check it out for a few minutes, maybe an hour. I got to it, it looked like a little house. And I went, there's a door, it just opens like you're going into a regular store. And there's a woman, there's like, hi, I'm Bev. This is Bev Chapman. Now, Mike Chapman is the most prolific wrestling author there is. Magazines, books, documentaries. Mike Chapman is the greatest author and the greatest historian that we have in the sport of wrestling. And here's Bev, she opens it, oh, come on in, I'll give you a tour. She showed me around the place. I thought it was weird that nobody else was there, but it was about an hour before she let it slip that the museum was closed on Mondays. She just happened to be there, so I knew on the way out, I better pick up some merch. So on the way out, I'm going through the, the store, and I said, okay, what should I pick up? And she made a few recommendations. One was a book about the life of Frank Gotch. Frank Gotch is the man who brought wrestling to Iowa. Back when the National Wrestling Alliance, when Ric Flair, the Four Horsemen, before it became the show that it is today, professional wrestling was a real sport and a real attraction between the ropes, and the world champion was George Hackenschmidt. They called him the Russian Lion, but I believe he was German. That's too late. I'm not going to stop recording the Wikipedia him. Maybe I'll put it in the notes later. But George Hackenschmidt was the champion. And if you want to know the real definition of a legend, a legend is something or someone that you've never seen before, but you only know through stories. 
There was no cable TV, there was no TV, there was very little media. So George Hackenschmidt was a legend. He said nobody was going to get their hands on Hackenschmidt and defeat him. But Frank Gotch was determined. He took on Hackenschmidt in Madison Square Garden and defeated him. Defeated him twice, as a matter of fact. But before Gotch got to that level of fame and that level of skill, do you know where he got his start as a professional wrestler? wrestling for prize money in the gold rush towns of Alaska. I had just come from Alaska. In fact, I stopped off in Skagway. Now, I'll do a thing on Skagway some other time. It's an incredible place. But that's the beginning of the hike called the Chilku Trail. If you've ever seen Alaska license plates where you see the mountain range and a little group of line of people heading up the mountains, that's the Chilku Trail. I got to hike that trail. This was the beginning of the gold rush. Now I'm making this road trip from Skagway, <laughs> the beginning of the trail to take you to the gold mining camps, down stopping off in Newton, Iowa to pick up a book about Frank Gotch making that same journey. He wrestled in the camps, he made so much money, he got back to Iowa with a bag, a money bag with a dollar sign on it with a whole lot of gold. And on his way home, he found his father. And his dad, what are you doing here? He, he, just walking through town. There's no Main Street or anything. His son, we just didn't make harvest this year. I have to turn over the deed to the farm. On his way to the bank to turn over the farm, and Frank pulls out a bag of gold and says, let's go to the bank and pay off the mortgage. You want to talk about legends. Frank Gotch is the real American legend. Driving from Alaska to Newton, Iowa, I picked up a book about an American legend in the sport of wrestling who made his journey from Skagway, Alaska to that very point in Iowa to not only save the family farm, but to bring the National Wrestling Alliance heavyweight title back to the United States of America. While we were touring the museum, now this is a little contention. I tried to verify this on the internet. I didn't have any luck. Bev said to me, you know Barry Davis? Barry Davis, national champion, Olympic champion, head coach at the University of Wisconsin. She said, yeah, he owns the diner next door. Oh, interesting. I want to go over there and see if Barry Davis is in there. Barry Davis, just like me, is left-handed. And I watch him wrestle too little too late. He had a certain technique to move his feet in the right place from a left-handed position to shoot a good double leg takedown because the feet are not... Anyway, it's something... A great technique. If you want to see the best example of him using that technique, check out the National... Oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The 1982 NCAA Finals. When he is wrestling, a dear, dear friend of mine, Kevin Darkus of Iowa State. Kevin used to live here in Lima. We used to teach at the same language institute, different branches, but we crossed paths. <laughs> and now here I am. Well... Darkus and Davis are good friends now, but they were fierce rivals. If you want to see brutal college wrestling in the 80s, take a look at Darkus versus Davis. Just yesterday, we were having a conversation. We were talking about Newton, Iowa. He's currently residing in Kansas City, and he does a lot of driving through the interstates there. And so he has a special stop off and exit 168 in Newton, Iowa. I said, is it true that Barry Davis owns a, a diner? And we've been talking for a couple of hours. We're both getting a little tired. He perks up and goes, Barry Davis owns a diner in Newton, Iowa? I said, don't quote me. I'm just the messenger. Somebody told me this 20 years ago that he owned a diner in Newton, Iowa. So I'm passing that information. Say, I need to talk to Barry about this. So we'll find out. Darkest will call Davis and say, all right, you beat me in the national finals in 82. But I'm on to you. Did you own a diner in Newton, Iowa? I think I just started a terrible rumor. Either way, I had an awesome conversation. And it was a great reminder of just what a real hallmark of American grit and manufacturing resurgence that is Newton, Iowa. It was that conversation with Kevin that inspired me to make this week's video about Newton. The Big Ten Championships just wrapped up. Iowa didn't do so well. They came in fourth in the Big Ten. Strange things happening in the world of college wrestling. And I want to offer a special thank you to Kevin Darkus, Barry Davis, Mike and Bev Chapman for making Newton, Iowa such a special place, along with the manufacturers and the longtime residents of Newton. 
and keeping that city alive and prospering, even after people called it the most broken city in America. As always, thank you for joining me on this journey to the Victory Train, and come back tomorrow for another world-class speaking tip.